That's going to take us until June of 2012. And so, again, the Liberals, despite their commitment to address this issue, have not lived up to it and made any improvement whatsoever in regards to the introduction of a poverty reduction strategy. Just like the housing, it's been all words. And uh, so they're never going to have to, as Carol Gore says, defend their punitive treatment of the poor in next fall's election. Um, and then, of course, she goes on to talk about uh, what to happen with the 250 special diet allowance. And uh, she talks about the release of um, Minister Broughton's Breaking the Cycle progress report on poverty reduction. But you know, at the end of the day, she concludes her remarks in the Toronto Star of December the 6th by saying, by week's end, it was clear that for all the paper his government has churned out and all the announcements his ministers had made, McGuinty had very little to say about reducing poverty. That is Carol Gore in the Toronto Star on December the 6th. So let's get back to the bill at hand. Supposedly, this is about affordable housing. Supposedly, it's about a promise the government has made since 2003. However, what we see today is that the government has turned a blind eye to the over 142,000 households that are waiting for affordable housing in Ontario. In this province today, we need to take a look at the situation. We need to understand there are 142,000 households who are waiting for affordable housing units. This is a huge list. And this list, by the way, does not include the people who need affordable housing or people who are currently spending well beyond what they can afford on housing. This list only includes people who are actually in the process of waiting for a unit. We know that the list is much longer. So what we're seeing is we're seeing an increase to the list of about 9% from last year alone. And uh, we've seen a rise in the number of households who are waiting. In fact, if you take a look at 2004 and you take a look at today, we've seen an increase of about 22% of people in this province during the term of this government who are waiting for affordable housing. And it looks like, because the government has made no commitment to new additional affordable housing, that they could be forced to wait 10 to 12 years for an affordable house. That is totally unacceptable. It is disgraceful that that is happening in Canada and in our own province of Ontario. As the member for Parkdale High Park pointed out last week, she said there are 250,000 families who pay more than 50% of their income on housing. Well, you take a look at your own paycheck and you think about the fact if you had to spend half of your paycheck towards housing, that is simply not sustainable. It's going to be very short time before these families will also join the waiting list for affordable housing. Action needs to be taken now. This government promised in 2003 and again in 2007 election that they would take action. However, they've only paid lip service to a very, very serious problem. We've only heard large announcements and grandiose statements, but no new housing. People have been waiting for action for seven years, but they were let down by the most recent announcements. And so we have a piece of legislation that we're debating here today that is underwhelming, to say the least. It's quite distressing to think 
that it's taken the government seven years to develop this disappointing affordable housing plan and coinciding legislation. It's disappointing. It appears as though the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing mailed this in because the, the bill accomplishes very little. It does make some revisions to the way municipal service managers can spend provincial funding and amend the Planning Act to allow for secondary um, units. It doesn't address the many systemic problems which today serve as significant obstacles to affordable housing. There is no thorough strategy here to address the needs of Ontarians who desperately need affordable housing. Perhaps what is most worrying about this bill is its complete lack of ambition. It contains no clear goals or objectives. It's just another bill with no contact, and it's not um, going to affect any real change. If we are to correct and improve Ontario's affordable housing situation, we need creative thinking and we need innovative solutions. In fact, that was what the stakeholders were looking for. There were consultations. 485 housing stakeholders were consulted for over six months on this bill. They did offer to this government thousands of submissions. But what most of them did concentrate on, um, they um, asked for four distinct actions. They asked for one, new units, new money, rent supplements, and inclusionary zoning provisions. These are the frontline workers who asked for those four actions on the part of the government. They are the experts who work in the housing field every day. They know what the challenges and the difficulties are. But this government did not respond to their requests because the bill contains no new units for families who need affordable housing. There is no new money. There is not a housing benefit. There are no rent supplements. And it doesn't even include a provision for the inclusionary zoning. This bill is really, on the part of the government, an abdication of its responsibility. It does, however, download enormous amounts of responsibility onto the municipal service managers. They are now tasked with developing and implementing their own affordable housing plans. I think what we see here is a government who, after seven years of promises, simply is admitting they don't know what to do. They have no new ideas, they have no money, and they are not prepared to offer additional affordable housing to the people who so de desperately need it. So the stakeholders have been pleading with the government for seven years to take decisive action on housing, but this bill provided them with nothing but platitudes. In fact, it's rather disappointing to the many stakeholders, the 485, who didn't see their requests given any attention. They all identified the same needs, but the government once again chose to ignore them. They asked for bold targets on housing units, sustainable funding for municipalities to enable long-term planning, but they did not receive a response. So today we have a bill that doesn't help municipalities in the province of Ontario. In essence, the buck has been passed to them. In essence, they've been told they're now responsible for the hundreds of thousands of Ontarians who have no access to housing. But there, were no, there was no funding for housing strategies, and it's going to be difficult for municipalities to plan for the future and develop long-term goals when they have no idea as to what funding may or may not be available over the long term. How can we expect our municipalities to devise and execute long-term housing strategies without knowing whether the provincial government is even capable 
or willing to provide the necessary funding. I'm not sure if the government realizes that the responsibilities that they have downloaded to the municipalities are impossible to carry on and do uh, without any assurance of any funding for the future. So we have a government with seven years in office who end up, after numerous promises, introducing an empty bill that doesn't provide for the building of one single unit. We are not seeing any decrease in the waiting list whatsoever. All we're seeing is a downloading of responsibility to Ontario municipalities. The bill is another attempt on the part of this government to shift responsibility. It will allow the Liberals, I guess, in the future to start blaming municipalities for failing to deliver the housing. But you know, I think this bill is a reflection on the ineptitude of this government. This bill is leaving Ontario's most disadvantaged without any hope. It's also an indication that this government is out of steam, it's tired, and they're not capable of solving the housing problem. Again, it's an attempt by the government to say that uh, any changes are contingent upon the federal government. The federal government has made it clear they'll be removing themselves from the housing business. Housing is a provincial issue. It is the province's responsibility to ensure that affordable housing is built and is accessible. So it's disappointing today to see a bill that assumes that a one-size-fits-all approach is capable of solving the problem. I want to congratulate the member for Burlington, the uh, member who's responsible for this issue. I think she's done an outstanding job in pointing out the uh, deficiencies with this bill. I think she stressed the fact that many Ontarians don't need long-term housing assistance, but they do need some assistance to get back on their feet. This assistance could have been made available in this bill in the form of a housing benefit, but it was not made available here. So, other, other jurisdictions have been providing that housing benefit, British Columbia, Manitoba, and Quebec. Well, Minister, or Mr. Speaker, there's much that could be said about this uh, bill. I think at the end of the day, we realize it falls short of meeting the needs of Ontarians in this province who desperately need affordable housing. I think we see a government who promised in 2003 and 2007 to take action, but uh, as I have indicated today and others have indicated as well, in our attempt to hold this government accountable, it isn't going to create one additional unit of affordable housing for the people in this province who so desperately need it. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member from Park Dale High Park. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I listened intently to the member from Kitchener Waterloo. What she said is absolutely correct. Um, this bill will not create one new unit of affordable housing. One new dollar uh, will uh, not one new dollar will go to affordable housing. Not one new rent supplement. And moreover, it won't even amend the Planning Act so that municipalities can take some real action through inclusionary zoning. Uh, certainly, we've had four housing ministers. We've had three years of promises. Uh, we've had six months where we've waited post past the time when we wanted a housing strategy, and it's start, starting to sound like a carol, Mr. Speaker. There's no partridge or pear tree at the end of it, though. There's absolutely nothing at the end of it. In fact, uh, we are number 10 of 10 provinces, the worst record among all the provinces. We spend $64 per capita in affordable housing. By contrast, Saskatchewan spends four times as much one province. We are literally the worst. And what do we have to show for it? 142,000 families waiting an average of 10 to 12 years for affordable housing. 50% of those who rent cannot afford to pay their rent and also buy the necessities of life. 50%. Um, and the members absolutely correct from Kitchener Waterloo. 250,000 Ontarians spend more than 50% on overhead that relates to housing. That's untenable. 
That cannot be sustained. These are figures, the likes of which we haven't seen since the Great Depression. No other government has overseen such devastation in the housing uh, quarter as the McGuinty Liberals have. So uh, then we get this Orwellian strong communities through affordable housing. No strong communities and no, Mr. Speaker, affordable housing to be had in this bill. Thank you. Further questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Mississauga Streetsville. Well, thank you, Speaker. I listened very intently to the member for Kitchener-Waterloo, and frankly, she is wrong.